Hello and welcome to Peer Tier, the German engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today we are back with episode 3 of our series where we explain every single vent, geyser and volcano in the game. I have for you the steam vent in two different versions, once in an uncooled version on the top and in a cooled version on the bottom. And on top of that I have the humble leaky oil fissure for you today. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are with our leaky oil fissure. So let's turn the overlay back on and let's pause the game. Let's take a look into our F2 overlay. We have our dev tool right here, which is supplying power to our thermal aqua tuner as well as to our liquid pump on the bottom. Total power consumption 1440 watts. It's a little bit on the high side, of course, because of the thermal aqua tuner, but that is unavoidable in most builds that involve a thermal aqua tuner. On the top here, I have built my standard outlet for our steam turbine that is meant to negate heat transfer as much as possible. In this case, it's really not needed because the thermal aqua tuner, as you will see in a second, is also cooling down our steam turbine. It is not self-cooled in this particular case, so this is really not needed. It's just a force of habit of mine. Let's take a look in the piping overlay next. Our thermal aqua tuner is coming out with our standard setup here so we can rotate around our polluted water that we have in our pipes at all times, even if the thermal aqua tuner is off. We're coming through our basin right here that is containing our leaky oil fissure, cooling it down very nicely. Then we're going to come back up and cool down our steam turbine, as I just mentioned a minute ago, and back into our thermal aqua tuner. Pretty simple and straightforward. Our steam turbine is just coming straight down and back into a liquid vent, just putting the water back into the steam basin. Once again, pretty easy and straightforward. Our liquid pipe thermal sensor here is set to above 14 degrees. If the polluted water is above 14 degrees, the thermal aqua tuner will turn on and cool it down by 14 degrees. So the lowest temperature that we should reach is around zero degrees. This is a personal preference, you can set it to whatever you want or whatever your needs are, better to say. Down here on the bottom, our liquid pump is hooked up to a thermal sensor, which is set up to below 20 degrees Celsius right here. And then the liquid pump is taking our crude oil as soon as it is below 20 degrees Celsius and puts it into an infinite storage. It takes quite a long time to accumulate any meaningful amount. So let's run it and let's take a look why that is. We are running it at 203.9 grams per second at 326.9 degrees Celsius. The eruption period is 600 seconds every 600 seconds. Yes, you heard that right. It is actually always running. But it is still a very, very small amount. That is just how that goes with the leaky oil fissure. That's why I personally want to put it into an infinite storage, accumulate it, and then use it for whatever meaningful thing you want to do. You want to produce plastic, you want to produce uh, petroleum and, and go for a generator. One of a million things can be done with this. It is just important to keep in mind that the amount you get out of it is very, very small compared to a normal oil reservoir. But the system here is pretty simple, so I would definitely build it if I were you, because it's always better to have something than to have nothing. It just works. There's no maintenance needed. A little bit of power. That's all it takes. And other than that, it will just run forever. And it gives you nice, nice crude oil. So I personally am a big fan of this setup. So let's move on to the steam vents. First up is this contraption right here. Let me pause it real quick before it actually erupts so we can look at this here later. Let's take a look into our F2 overlay first as usual and let's see what the power does. We have our output right here as always so we can actually siphon off some power but on top of that it is actually completely self-powered. There is no external power source needed at all. We're just running a heavy watt wire along and then change over to a conductive wire because we are using less than 2000 watts. All we are doing with it is running the thermal aqua tuner and I hooked up a couple batteries to it. Do you really need two batteries? Probably not. But better safe than sorry, I had some space in there, so might as well do it. In our F6 overview, we can see that the thermal aqua tuner actually does nothing else than cooling down the chamber where our steam turbines are. We can see it's coming around here, all the way through the turbine chamber, and then all the way back and going back around in a loop. Here, the liquid pipe thermal sensor is set up to above 20 degrees. That's when our thermal aqua tuner will turn on. But other than that, pretty easy and straightforward. The left and the right turbine just coming straight down into their respective chambers. Yes, here we have chambers. You see we have some metal tiles right here. Those are very important. I will explain that in one second. And then the middle two is what we use to actually get some water out of this system. Not only power, but also water is what we get out of the system. 
The water is coming out at its original temperature straight out of the steam turbine and that is roughly 95 degrees Celsius. If we take a look at our storage up here, our water is at 93.9 degrees Celsius and that is pretty high. But it can still be used for certain things, for example for oxygen generation. Cooling down oxygen is a hell of a lot easier than cooling down water because of the thermal mass. You can see that in my let's play, there I am also cooling down the oxygen instead of the water. So now let's see what have we actually built here. We have a chamber and this chamber here has a width of 8 tiles, the middle one has a width of 10 tiles and the right one once again 8. So 8, 10, 8, that is how this here is built. Here we have some diamond temp shift plates which are right beside the metal tiles which are made out of aluminum. We are going through the entire middle chamber and we are just transferring the heat from the middle chamber to the left into the right chambers. On the left we get a little bit of help of course from our thermo aqua tuner but the main heat is coming from the steam vent. And you can clearly see that because the right side here has nothing in it that heats it other than the steam vent itself. So let's turn it on and run it for a second and see what this actually looks like. The steam vent is now erupting and let's see what the stats are. We are running at 2544.7 grams a second at 500 degrees Celsius with an eruption period of 317 seconds every 661 seconds. So basically half the time this thing here is on and it's producing power. And we are talking lots and lots of power. And you will see that even better in a second when we are going down to our cooled solution. On the left side here we are generating about 630 watts, here about 776, here about 570 and here about 430. And the longer the system runs the more we will produce. Here we should reach 850 very shortly as well as over here as well. So alone from these two here we will get out about 1700 watts which is more than enough to power the thermal aquitude and everything else is excess power that we can feed straight into our base. This is a very very powerful build. If you have a steam vent I would strongly recommend you build this as soon as you have access to advanced materials. Not space materials but advanced materials like steel, like plastic, like aluminum and like diamond. I have built this exact same setup before. Unfortunately I have not found one of those vents here in my current let's play yet. But if you find one I would definitely build this here in a heartbeat. It is just so so powerful. So let's take a look at the cooled version of our steam vent. In our F2 overlay we can once again see the entire thing is completely self-powered. On the right here I have some jumbo batteries, those are really not needed, you can build them if you want to, I just built them for safety, definitely better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them, you know how that works by now. But on the left side here we have two large power transformers that we did not have in the other build, and the reason for that is very simple. We have two thermo aqua tuners. The maximum load for a conductive wire is 2000 watts. One of those thermo aqua tuners alone uses 1200, so we cannot use a single wire to power both of them. On top of that, we also have a liquid pump here on the bottom that I'm also powering from this system. So we are way, way above our 2000 watt threshold. Therefore, we need two large power transformers to come out with two separate cables that are first transformed. And even with this system here, we are still power positive. So you could build another outlet over here, for example, where I have my batteries and feed the excess power into your base. There's absolutely no problem with doing that at all. Let's take a look at our piping next. Let's start with the right thermo aqua tuner because the right thermo aqua tuner is the same as above. All it does is it's coming along here and it's cooling down our steam turbine chamber including our batteries and our transformers. Those are not directly cooled, those are only cooled by the hydrogen that I have in the chamber. You can use really anything you want in that chamber but hydrogen is of course as always recommend. The left thermo aqua tuner is used to cool down this basin right here. So what does this basin right here do? Instead of coming with our water straight out into some sort of storage or maybe a spam or whatever you want to feed that into, this time around we actually want to use the water at a reasonable temperature. So we are putting it into here, cooling it down and then siphon it out with this pump here and it comes out at a nice 20 degrees. And that is because I set it to below 20 degrees. So if the water in here is at below 20 degrees, the pump will turn on and pump our water out to wherever we want to. Just for once, I didn't build an infinite storage. I just figured I'd build a tiny little bit of a tank down here and call it a day. Of course, you can do with it whatever you want. For example, you can even rotate it through your base and use it as a cooling means before you put it in a tank of some sort. Or you can also use the water directly as it comes out to generate oxygen to have nice cool oxygen right away. There are so many use cases for water, I'm sure you're aware of them. You can do with it whatever you want. So let's turn it on and let's run it and let's see what this actually looks like. 
we are generating lots and lots of power. The left side here is already running at a max 850 watts. Here we are up to 763. Here we are at 707. And on the right side, we are hanging a little bit behind at 731 watts. No problem at all to power this entire system here for all of eternity. Even if the steam vent goes dormant, and that is true for both those builds, it will just stop working. Not a big deal. As soon as it comes back online, it will heat back up. It will turn on these two here, which get the whole thing here jump started, and it will work once again. We have these temp shift plates here. Those are highly important for the heat transfer to the left and to the right. Without those, we are not transferring enough energy into those two chambers here to actually generate steam and therefore power. Do they really have to be diamond? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I have not tested it. I use diamond because I know that it works 100%. And you should have access to diamond if you build a system like this because you need steel, you need plastic, you need all sorts of advanced stuff. Diamond should be your smallest problem at this point. Before I forget it, the thermal aqua sensors on both sides are set up to above 20 degrees. Once again, personal preference. You want to have it a little bit hotter, you want to have it a little bit colder. It doesn't really matter. You can do with it whatever you want. And again, you don't need any advanced material. This here is polluted water in our pipes. You will need advanced material for something else, but in here, Polluted water is more than good enough. The heat capacity is perfect for what we are trying to accomplish right here. So yes, these here are my setups for the leaky fissure, the uncooled steam vent and the cool steam vent right here. I think those are pretty powerful builds, all three of them very, very efficient and very helpful if you find one of those vents in one of your bases. So all I have left to say is thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. Let me know what do you think about those builds? What can I do better? Do you have any other ideas? I'm always open to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.